Welcome to the Bella Vista Garden Club, um, Bella Vista Gardening Program. Um, Jerry Horner, and with me today is Lou Jasper, and she's a fellow member of the Bella Vista Garden Club and a Benton County Master Gardener also. And this month we're going to be talking about butterfly gardening, and Lou is our expert on butterfly gardening. And we will also be talking about upcoming events. <clears throat> There's quite a few this month. And also what you need to be doing in your garden for the month of April. So um, there's so many new events coming up um, that we need to talk about. And the first one is the, um, uh, I think we have a flyer on it. It's the event, it's called Duets in Bloom 2. Now we had Duets in Bloom 1 several years ago. And this year we're having it at the um, Bella Vista Country Club and um, kind of look for these flyers that are uh, around town and um, it's a free art exhibit and what we do is the Floralia Rangers Guild is putting this on and we will take local artists pictures and artwork and then the Floralia Rangers Guild will make floral designs interpreting that art so it's an in interesting, different um, way to look at art and floral design. And it's going to be at the Country Club, like I said. They're going to have good food and drink specials during the event. It will begin noon Thursday, the 26th, and um, run through Friday, April 27th at 3 o'clock. So <clears throat> Thursday, April 26th is when it starts at 3. It's going to be judged in the morning. And they'll have an artist reception at um, 4 to 7, from 4 to 7 on the 26th of April. So you can meet the artists of, you know, and the designers and just kind of mingle with them. So Sounds like fun. It is. Then the other things we're having is uh, plant sales. The plant sales are really going to be in full force starting in April and May. Um, and we want to be careful about planting your plants yet because it's, uh, it's just too early. But uh, their plants have arrived at the nursery, <clears throat> and the sales will begin this month. So, uh, the Benton County Master Gardeners—that's uh, a flyer in the middle—is the um, um, is going to be on um, April 28th. So that is going to be down in Bentonville at the First United Methodist Church, right off the square. And it includes a huge plant sale, planted containers, gardening exhibits, demonstrations. They have a lawn and garden sale with all things garden that are, like, you know, used garden equipment. But it's pretty good. One new service they're offering this year is Sherry Smith, um, the plant pa um, pathologist from the University of Arkansas will be there to identify any plant problem you have. So she'll have her micro, uh, microscope there and she can look at your plant and see if, what the problem is with your plant. So just bring a sample and she'll look at that. Then the next one we have is the Bella Vista Garden Club plant sale. That's their big plant sale. It's a big one. It's big and it's going to be at the Village Wastewater off Highway 71 from 8 to 1. And we will have lightly used garden items also, <clears throat> and just loads of plants. They've been pot they potted at your garden? Yes, they've potted and there. So the it's garden. plants coming out of our member gardens, and uh, they're very reasonable. And you'll be able to uh, also order, I can pre-order your Bella Vista daffodil bulbs. We're going to pre-order those, and for those will be for sale in the fall. Yeah, one thing you need to mention, that the plants that we have at the garden sale is out of our own it is, gardens. Right. And so they've really been kind of tested for us. To, right. We know to, they we grow know here. We know they grow here. <laughs> we know so, they grow here. Because we, they've multiplied and we have right. plants to sell. Yes, we do, and we love to share our plants. We really do. And this plant sale has been going on over 20 years. I'm, I think maybe, well, I don't know how many. I know 24 since I've been here. So I know it's been over 20, 24 years. So anyway, and Nature's Calling will also be having a plant sale um, before our, um, the big one on May, uh, on May 5th or May 6th. And they will be out there on the Saturdays, April 21st and April 28th. <clears throat> and they have their tomatoes and peppers and uh, hostas. And they, I think they have a lot of coleus, they have beautiful coleus. So they will be selling their plants uh, then, along with our plants on May 5th. So uh, it's always the first Saturday of May. 
So you can put that on your calendar every year. But today we want to talk about um, uh, butterfly gardens and what to put in your butterfly garden and what Maybe you need to, in your butterfly garden. How about getting it started? We got to get it started. So where okay. do you start? You got to have a you look for your sunny place in the garden. Um, butterflies need sun and warmth before they fly. Mm -hmm. Flowers need to bloom. Mm -hmm. And what we want in a you find a place that is um, sunny. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to pick your plants that you want in and we have a good list that we'll give people today of mm -hmm. plants. But first you need to think about that the kind of flowers that you like yourself so that the butterflies is going to probably like them too if right, they're blooming. Right. And that's yeah. a lot of annuals and perennials do not bloom all summer. No. So you need to put the perennials, the wild flowers in there, but you also need annuals in right. there. So Because they need the nectar. They need the nectar and from... And perennials, like I said, maybe bloom for three weeks in the spring and then they're done. And if we... So, so you want to think of your butterfly garden as having flowers all summer, summer long, right. clear into fall. Right. And of course your monarch doesn't come through, your monarch butterfly doesn't mm -hmm. even come through your gardens till late September to October. So you might see one here and there, but really and truly they, they're not coming through till later okay. to head to Mexico. So the monarch, but they have to have a host plant to put their eggs on. All yeah. butterflies need host plants, right? They do, they do. Um, a lot of them, we can't put that many um, we can't put that many host plants, Jerry, in our garden for all the butterflies yeah. because uh, some of them, their host are trees and shrubs oh, right, and, right. and things and, and native plants. So we'll talk about the butterflies today that, that we really see. And they're the larger mm -hmm. butterfly, mm -hmm. and that's the swallowtail, mm -hmm. the spicebush swallowtail, the black swallowtail that we mm -hmm. have. People like to see a larger butterfly right. in there. There's we have a lot of, there's lots of, there's yeah. lots of little blues, there's lots of little sulfurs, there's lots of little whites. Yeah. And they're pretty. Yeah. And they're, we call them flying flowers, yeah. but they're not like that big swallowtail yeah. yeah. that we see, or the monarchs, we get mm -hmm. excited when the monarchs, right. because we've heard so much about monarchs, so right. we get really excited uh, for them. So let's talk first then about Making our butterfly garden in a sunny spot. Okay. Also, you need to put in uh, a water, some water for the butterfly. Somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere you can put a low, uh, put a, a, just a low little uh, terracotta dish on the ground and mm -hmm. put a little water in it, put a rock in the middle. So he has a place to land. Well, I like sometimes and, with, so, with sand in mind. Too. You can. Uh, you can also remember butterflies love um, <coughs> fruit, decaying oh, fruit. Yeah. They love bananas. They love pears, um, apples that are soft that but are you starting. You can even put the ferment. peelings out there, right? You can. They like the fruit, Jerry. Yeah. They they get. But if the you have fruit. a peeling with a little fruit on it, then they can. You can yeah. put that in. So think okay. about those places how you're going to design it. If you want to. Uh, bird bath and then put a rock in the middle of the mm -hmm. bird bath, you know, so that they still they have water. Then uh, if you'll notice that a butterfly likes to warm up, he can't fly until it gets a, a 65, you know, he has to be warm before mm -hmm. his wings will go. So you can put flat rocks and use a dark colored rock in the spring, uh -huh. collects the, the heat, heat, and then the butterfly, you'll see the butterfly there on the rock uh -huh. and it's warming its uh -huh. wings. When a butterfly comes out of its uh, cocoon or chrysalis, uh, people yeah. call it cocoon, but it's really a chrysalis and they have to flap their wings and get them dry yeah. and they like to do that in the sun. Yeah. So now you've got a sunny spot, you've got you've some plants in mind that you want mm -hmm. and we'll give you names of the plants yeah. in a little bit, but then you want um, a rock there um, or two. Um, so you, you want put the rock actually in the garden. Next in to the, the garden, plant. laying it just down in oh. the ground. And then you want to also take um, and have a seat for yourself so that you can go out and watch, and watch the butterflies. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now you've got that in your mind, and you've, of course you've got to have your soil ready for the uh, plants mm -hmm. that you're going to put in there. 
Now basically that's it, um, that you're going to get started. Now mm -hmm. you just have to put the plants in. Well, what kind of plants? Well, we have two kinds of plants for butterflies. Mm -hmm. You have the pollinators, which are your flowers. Mm -hmm. Now you remember, you're going to, well, you want flowers that's going to bloom. So that's what they eat. That's, that's what the, they're going they to get, their them, nectar. Right. And why they're called <coughs> pollinators is because they go from one flower to the next. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're pollinating the flowers right. for us. But then you also want some host plants. Now we're going to talk about host plants yeah. for the monarch, and we're going to talk about the host plant for the swallowtail okay. today. Well, that's what's so interesting, because these butterflies are so particular. Well, they, they will monarchs. only lay their eggs on certain plants. Sure. And they're just really, really picky. Well, so. it's, that's what their caterpillars can eat. That's right. Yeah. So anything else, they, would, they couldn't survive. No. They, they can't eat so anything So we're going else. to say that you need some flowers that have a landing strip mm -hmm. for them. Now we'll get into naming some of the plants. And the host if plants. You, the ho this is the pollinators. These are oh. the pollinators. We'll start with the pollinators okay. first. So I want the black swallowtail because it's a beautiful butterfly. Mm -hmm. It's large. I can see it. Mm -hmm. All right. It has to have a flat flower like zinnias. Now zinnias are going to bloom all summer. Mm -hmm. uh, the marigold? pentas, the marigolds, mm -hmm. um, the uh, lobelia, any of those that cosmos have a flat or? cosmos. Yeah, they like that landing and they like bright colors. Mm -hmm. And you don't just put maybe one plant, mm -hmm. like one penta. Put three a, or you four want a grouping right a you grouping want a grouping for it so that but they you can could see. put like a, a group here and a group here you don't have to have it one group right you remember you want short them. flowers tall mm -hmm. flowers mm -hmm. medium-sized flowers right you want the tall ones for the larger butterflies mm -hmm. and then the shorter ones for right. your little blues and sulfas and things that come in now you said something about the cone flowers that's a flat flower but they have been hybridized so much and all these colors developed that they don't have the nectar in them. The nectar's just come And the butterflies on. will maybe come around to your white ones or your mm -hmm. orange ones or so, but they really like the native, the native one, the purple one there. That haven't been there. tampered yeah, with. Yeah, right. that hasn't been tampered with. Right. They've made the, the colors of the cone flowers so beautiful, mm -hmm. um, and they've made them so much larger, mm -hmm. and their petals are all flat, right. and it's a perfect cone flower. Right. But the butterflies don't get the they nectar They like the old-fashioned right. natives. And so remember, so mm -hmm. there you've got to remember, you can buy native perennials, mm -hmm. and then you must have the annuals in there right. so that you have a bloom in all your butterfly garden all summer long. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk about the host, but we're okay. talking about the host for two plants, mm -hmm. or for two butterflies. Rather than that would be the swallowtail. So first now of you all, you got a the, picture of the swallowtail. Don't the you? host, yeah, you can okay. hunt it up. It's in, it's in there. Sure. I have one in my garden. There he is. Oh. I don't know where you can that's the, tune in to, to it or not to bring it in. But that's the black swallowtail. And we see a lot of those. Yes, they're very and they're common. very large. They're very mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. So. We'll say if she's going to lay her eggs, she doesn't lay her eggs on the pentas mm -hmm. or on the flowers. She likes anything in the carrot family. So, and parsley, dill. Yeah. She likes loves fennel. Um, she loves fennel. She loves fennel. <laughs> She'll eat yeah. all the leaves off my fennel. Yeah, Jerry <laughs> called me last year and said, I have a problem. I don't, can't feed all my caterpillars. Right. And um, she couldn't. They she were had, starving because they, they ate all my, my fennel and it, they were still. <laughs> so eating. you, and don't just <clears throat> plant one little bunch of parsley, plant four or five yeah. throughout your garden. Yeah. Because caterpillars will. They'll go after them. They'll eat it. Yeah, yeah. And um, don't think that they're worms destroying. Mm -hmm. right. If you have dill, they'll come in and eat it all. Check in a book. Look what your caterpillars are. Yeah. Your dill will come back. Mm -hmm. The parsley yeah. will come back. The fennel will come back. But the caterpillars have something to eat, yeah. eat on. Yeah. Okay, then we're going to talk about the monarch. Mm -hmm. It has to have anything milkweed milkweed family milkweed yeah. family and that's what she's going to lay her eggs on mm -hmm. and this whole process of metamorphosis is going to talk that's from the egg to another butterfly where mm -hmm. it comes out a butterfly so you have um, 
that's a wonderful process and it's mm -hmm. a it's amazing it's good to harvest your caterpillars um, and you can take them in the house and uh, well you have little butterfly houses you, you put can them. have butterfly houses and or they're so cute they're little some. houses with uh, screens screened on it and you know you can watch them make their little chrysalis they're so cute to they watch. are and uh, they're fascinating to watch them turn into a butterfly mm -hmm. from that but you have to put their host plant in that little you need to box put, for them yes, to eat. they have to have right. something they have to, to, eat have on. to eat because <clears throat> caterpillars um, eat a lot and they do. <laughs> they're very messy they poop a lot yeah. and uh, so you need to keep their uh, container that you have them yeah. in clean you put newspaper at the bottom and just I do the or paper towels and, mm -hmm. and that and it, it's uh, a process that not only um, mystifies children mm -hmm. adults the same yeah. they get very excited when uh, they know like, that they're hatching out yeah. and then um, after they dry their wings then you turn them loose mm -hmm. and put them back out in the process and mm -hmm. all of this process um, l this takes about three weeks mm -hmm. and uh, some now remember our we need in our butterfly garden needs to be close to um, a brush pile or something at your edge of your woods or at the edge of the garden because some of our late swallowtails the chrysalis will winter over in a wood oh, pile really? and then you will that's the early um, butterflies that you see in the spring in April uh -huh. they've wintered o oh, over I they're see. not um, even they, in this cold, cold weather, they went over? They, they live through the winter in yeah. a wood pile, in a protected area. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And then they're they the need early a brush ones. brush or something out there for protection. Sometimes they come out, if we have warm days, they come out too soon, and then we get a cold snap like we yeah. do, and then yeah. it's bad for them. But yeah. most butterflies only, they don't live uh, a long life yeah. uh, as they're we flying We have to around. enjoy them while we We have, have to enjoy yeah. them while we can. Well, there's one thing about the... Um, monarchs that I get confused because there's also the um, viceroy viceroy and when I see an orange butterfly or orange and yellow butterfly the viceroy looks like this this is the viceroy and I see a viceroy I think it's a monarch they look very really similar. hard to tell the difference between the two the way so. I do is by the viceroy has that light yellow mm -hmm. inner wing right in the center but when they're flitting around you can't see yeah you have to chase well. them down and so see then, what you and can then the, get them closer the, uh, monarch you can see is is darker and it has it's like the same color all over except for the female well right? yeah and you want to remember that we don't have many monarchs come through in the right. summertime right your viceroy is in the summer it's a summer one and your monarch is, he's going to stay up north until mm -hmm. he knows that it's time okay. to get, um, so. head for Mexico. And remember, so too, that fall. our our monarch that we see here is not the one that's going to make the long journey all, all, the, all way the way to, to Mexico. Mexico. Okay. Yeah, he's probably going to lay um, eggs in Texas, Florida, or somewhere, uh -huh. and then they're going to go on. It's but not they're going to pass through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but we still have to provide, it's very important that we provide the milkweed here mm -hmm. for as them to our, eat. Right, and let them get started on their right. journey. Yeah. yeah. Well, milkweed has just been devastated, you know, in the, in the wild because we've planted, I mean, we've built so many homes and subdivisions and we've taken all the, the native habitat out. So. Well, how about spraying that we sometimes, uh, they were spraying in the ditches. Oh, yeah. And, and so forth, and that yeah. got rid of a lot. So, I think the uh, some of the nurseries are starting to carry more milkweed now. They are, and um, I th but it's very hard to grow from seed. The success rate with milkweed seeds is really low. Uh, that's know. why they probably need to go to um, oh, yeah. the uh, native. We have a, a native plant mm -hmm. nursery. We have Pine Ridge Gardens down at London, Arkansas. Mary right. Ann King. Uh, has a good selection mm -hmm. for and a I milkweed. think there's one out of Fayetteville that, that yeah, the, specializes the in white, native plants. Uh -huh. white plants. She has some. Um, mm -hmm. Marianne King has probably more mm -hmm. native plants, and then the Missouri the Missouri uh, wildflower. wildflower nursery. They're up in uh, Jeff City, uh, just outside of Jefferson, Jefferson City. City, and they have a wonderful catalog. 
and they have the milkweed. A lot of variety. Right, a lot of variety of milkweed. There's just not one milkweed. There's yeah, you, there's purple ones. There's pink right. ones. Right, and so there's you, also if you like a purple. You can put purple. Right. You know. There's also a tropical milkweed, mm -hmm. and there was an argument here a couple of years ago that the tropical milkweed was not good for our monarchs, and that. Proof That's false, true, and yeah. Westwood Garden sells yeah. that. Yeah. When the tropical is, it will die. The tropical it was die. tropical, it's one season. and it's not going to. And then the uh, butterfly weed, that is the milkweed. That's the orange the, one that we orange. see in the ditches. And, it comes and back please every year. do not dig it out of the ditches right. because right. it has a taproot that goes to China. And you can't And you can't, can't dig it, it and successfully transplant yeah. it. Save it seed or, or buy seed yeah. or go to a nursery. And one thing about the Missouri Garden um, book, not only it has every, shows all of the blooms, but in the back it's marked. Oh, if it's that great. native plant is for the butterfly and right. if it is a... Um, if it is a host plant or a pollinator. Right, it has, and I love this, I love this catalog because not only does it show you, um, it has guides to what butterfly, what good are butterfly plants, it's, it rates the plants based on do you want this in your front yard at your front door or do you want to kind of put it in the back because it gets a little scraggly and they, they rate them a four star they and do. down. They do. So if you see a four star on there, you know that's going to be a nice showy plant. Yes. And then if you see a one star, it may have to go in the back of the, the shed. shed. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Go out in the shed because yeah. you don't right. want it. You know, it's, it's not it's, the it prettiest look plant a after blooms. It look more yeah. like a weed sometimes. Right. Their, their catalog's wonderful. And, um, and you can go online right. and get the and, same and information. And, so. and rather than us naming all of the plants that that butterflies, what we talked about was the mm -hmm. two, because those flowers that you're going to put in your butterfly garden that's going to uh, bloom mm -hmm. and nectar, just watch that you have a lot of flat flowers mm -hmm. or something that the butterfly can hang on to. Mm -hmm. Because when he comes into land, um, He's, he's got to have something like that is... Like a snapdragon, it's not going to be easy for him to no, land on. No, no, and he can't um, get his little straw down mm -hmm. and suck the pollen. Right. And, and that's how I describe it with to the kids at, at yeah. school. Is uh, It's like a little straw there. He, mm -hmm. he, he looks up, he sees uh, ultraviolet colors, and it's like, okay, there's my runway. And mm -hmm. he flies in, and he can land send his little straw down, get the pollen, and go oh, to yeah. another one. And then after that pollen's been taken, or that, that nectar's out mm -hmm. for the day, do they make nectar every day, the flowers? That flower, as it blooms, but as the a, as a flower gets older and the pollen count goes down in it, the color changes, and the butterfly is smart enough that after that color changes in the pollen, where the, and mm -hmm. he doesn't see all the pollen, and he won't. He goes to another, another flower. flower. Yeah, that has a oh, lot of pollen. Oh, there's like a, a signal that tells him. There's a signal that tells the, him there that, yeah. that that flower is old. I probably there's won't. There's no nectar. There's no nectar, yeah. so I'll just go That's on amazing. my way. Mm -hmm. Nature is amazing. I, I'm always amazed by that. But the Diana um, fritillary. Yes, that which, is the state butterfly. We in 2007, and, Lori Spencer. Um, who's a good friend of mine and yeah. who has the oh, butterfly sure. and moth. And this is the old book. Yeah. Uh, she has now made a new book. It's but Arkansas Butterflies and Moths. And, moths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and she's now made um, several books, one mm -hmm. for children, and then she's um, got our state flower, our uh, state flower, state, state butterfly. butterfly. And it is a fitillary, and it's a Diana. And Diana gets its name from a princess. Mm -hmm. But... Look at the female, and I've got to keep it down on my legs. <laughs> All right, so it is, looks like this. This is our state. And it's on an old-fashioned coneflower. Yes, it is. All right. And here is the male. So they don't look anything alike. They don't look anything alike. Yeah. So it's really interesting that that not all male and female butterflies, look they're alike. quite different. Yeah. But this but is their our host state. plants, the violet. Yes, it is. And I've been pulling up violets in my well, lawn. Well, leave some. There's I'm a lot of putting violets. Putting more out, out there. in the woods so that the. And they're, they're the, kind the of an endangered um, in some areas. We yeah. have them here in the Ozarks, we do mm -hmm. see 
the fiddleri. But it, they it, are there Diana. are fewer of them now. Yes, there are. So fewer. we need to There's feed them with the violets. Mm -hmm. Leave the your violets. Wild, wild violets. Leave your violets out in the woods, and maybe they can use that as their host plants. Right. So. Well, so I think they can get online um, because butterfly gardening is um, so popular now, mm -hmm. and gardening. Period. Period. Is and um, there is such a list of wild flowers that you can, and mm -hmm. trees. Um, mm -hmm. Like the pawpaw tree. Is pawpaw the tree, the okay. tulip tree. Yeah. Um, all of them are for different. The pawpaw mm -hmm. is your uh, zebra swallowtail, mm -hmm. and right. that's where he yeah. or she lays her. Well, we're going to put a list of the host plants and the, um, the um, pollinated plants on the website. So they'll be on our website, bellavistagardenclub.com. And what we just need to remember is the pollinator plants are where they get their pollen get their and food. that's where they get their food and that's their pollinating the mm -hmm. different flowers. And the host plants are where they lay their eggs and, and the caterpillar then comes out that. and eats it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's two different things. And you need so both in you your... You need both. need right. both. Right. But we can have a beautiful, beautiful butterfly garden. In Very several easy. areas. And remember, you're, you don't have to have it in a garden. You can do it on your patio. You mm -hmm. can do it on your uh, deck. Yeah, uh, this wherever. can be scattered all through your It can be, yard. but if you don't have any place yeah. uh, to have a real garden, then mm -hmm. you can just put it in pots. And mm -hmm. But think about what they need. What they need. Yeah. And then have a pot of for pollinators and have a pot mm -hmm. for the uh, mm -hmm. parsley. Yeah. And um, there, so they can lay and then their watch eggs and on eat it. the parsley. Yeah. Well, we also have talked about what to do in April. There's a lot to do in April. Um, the hummingbird feeders probably should have been out April 1st. And I usually get mine out April 1st. And you use a ratio of four to one, four part water, one part sugar. And you don't want any stronger than that. And you do not need to add red food coloring or red dye because they'll find the the feeders are always have some red on them, so that you don't need to add that artificial flower, uh, color. So, and then it's time to uh, clean up. Um, if you haven't cut off all of your old uh, stems um, on your perennials, mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. They look kind yeah. of tacky yeah. now, and rake the leaves. Um, mm -hmm. Pull out all the winter weeds. weeds a lot of weeds. Yeah, of the, weeds. and they're blooming nice. And guess what the blooms do? Makes it those makes seeds. Smart. And so you're just putting down for winter seeds next year. Yeah. And then start mulching your um, beds. Mm -hmm. I put three to four inches of mulch on or compost, mm -hmm. um, whatever mm -hmm. uh, that's available. Yeah, I've been so it's time to really clean up. Uh, mm -hmm. I've yep. been using the shredded leaves as we have leaves. At leaves and leaves and leaves, so and you have a good shredder, and we have a good shredder, so and you must, and, and, and it's better to shred them oh, yeah. before you use yeah. them as mulch. Yeah. And the perennials, this is the month you want to um, uh, divide your perennials if they get too big, and maybe share them with your neighbors or the garden club or whatever. And you want to plant your perennials, your trees, and your shrubs. This is really a good month to do that in April. Before it gets too hot, and a lot of the uh, a lot of the trees from the nurseries, well, not a lot. I shouldn't say because I see leaves on them, but some of them are still dormant, mm -hmm. and so good time to plant them. Yeah, when it depends on the tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, annuals. Mm -hmm. Well, last night was a good night to know why you don't have annuals out already. Mm -hmm. Although I see at the box stores they have the annuals out, not a good time no. to uh, plant them. It's too cold. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to say that April 15th in Arkansas was probably the last frost. That's been proven in my 28 years of living here. That's been proven wrong, wrong, wrong. You can't wrong. depend on that. I uh, can't depend on it. So um, I always hold off till about the 1st of, of May well, or even all, after. Yeah, sometimes it's been the 15th of May before it was safe to put them out there. Yeah. So, and uh, so. so if you want to cover them, I guess mm -hmm. that's perfectly yeah. fine. And yeah. for goodness sakes, don't put out um, tomato plants or basil, basil mm -hmm. or uh, peppers or something. That well, if is, they just sit there and they don't do anything. No, they you want know. warm temperatures. Yeah. So, and the bulbs, the, the bulbs, the daffodils, Bellavista daffodils are gorgeous this year. Well, it was cold and, last um, winter. And um, they're they beautiful. Like but you have to leave that greenery, the leaves on there, for at least six weeks, six to eight weeks because that feeds the bulb for their bloom next year. So, um, 
house plants? We can put the house plants out. You can put the house. Yeah, you can put your house plants out now. But remember, you got to bring them back in. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a nice, warm, sunny day, um, the sun is. You have to watch house plants burn. Mm -hmm. So if the yeah. sun's too hot, you didn't. But I start getting my house plants out maybe on the deck or something mm -hmm. on a nice warm day and then but bring them back in because it's a little yeah. Yeah. cold at night yeah. and yeah. they don't really like that yeah. they want um, warm weather they're tropicals mm -hmm. and so they need to uh, have the warm weather okay. and then lawns you don't fertilize, uh, don't fertilize till they're at least um, <clears throat> green for two weeks and you want at least an inch of water every week on your lawns and roses uh, new growth is starting to pop out and you want to fertilize your established roses, but you want to water them first. Make sure the soil is wet before you water, uh, before you fertilize, and then water again after you fertilize. So it doesn't, they don't burn the roots. And then watch for your black spot. You can use baking soda to treat for black spot. And then vegetables. Well, um, you could be out. getting your garden ready for vegetables. Mm -hmm. And if you had a uh, a winter crop just for fertilizer and to keep the weeds mm -hmm. down get it, um, put it under or in your soil, mm -hmm. and then uh, if you have winter weeds in your garden, that's, get it ready for your tomatoes mm -hmm. and things. But you yeah, should peppers. already have your cold um, seedling se seedling in the ground. Mm -hmm. um, last night it was, it was cold it was and cold. froze ice. Yeah. Um, so it might have taken some or nipped a brown yeah, around yeah. the edges of some of even your winter them, crops. But it's gonna well, set them back. Them. It'll set uh, them back. No, but yeah. it could slow them. Uh, yeah. Some people put beans out in it early, and it will Nip them. make a brown. Yeah, yeah. it it will. But so um, our, lettuce and and kale and mm -hmm. all of your peas and things, mm -hmm. your spinach, lettuce. I mean, I think I said that, but it would just you know, those crops should be yeah. fine. Yeah. So for more information on your garden, you can go to the Bella Vista Garden Club uh, website or um, the Bentonville, I mean, not the Bentonville, we're in Bella Vista, um, the Benton County Master Gardener website. And the next Garden Club meeting for Bella Vista will be April 25th, 11 o'clock at the Community Church. And the program's going to be When Greedy is Good. And that's going to be presented by Connie... Riper Estes, and she's the owner of Greedy Goats of Northwest Arkansas. She's going to show us how goats can take care of the weeds. And, and poison I, ivy. They're very yeah, good they're at good, eating. They can they're eat very poison, good at eating poison ivy. Yeah. And I think the POA has, has already um, had them come and do some trimming of weeds. And they get rid of the... Um, Invasive. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, they're yeah. they're very good at yeah. eating whatever is out there. Yeah, and they're not and they too can picky. Tolerate it. Yeah, yeah, they can tolerate it. And well, thank you, Lou, for joining me. You're welcome. We always learn so much from you and sharing all your information about butterfly gardens. I can't well, wait to get mine. We need to have them out there. You mm -hmm. need to plant some and, and realize why you're planting. Uh, uh, pollinators and host mm -hmm. uh, yeah. for them, right. and so you, that you can enjoy them. Oh, yeah. Butterflies are beautiful, them. and they are. Make and you don't feel try happy. to. Yes, yeah. Okay. So and they're uh, fun for kids to try to catch. Oh yeah, but we, don't we don't let don't them catch really them. catch them. Yeah. <laughs> but so. they, we, they sure get some running. Yeah, yeah it does. Get some, some exercise yeah. instead of those little machines. And I also want to mention we have some beautiful flowers here from Just Petaling. Um, yeah, very that's pretty. our new nursery, and on. Um, uh, Forest Hills Boulevard. Is it a nursery or plant? Just it's a, a nursery. I mean, not a nursery. I'm sorry. It is a go. florist. Okay. She does beautiful flowers. And I think she has a few potted things, but not maybe some succulents. But she does have beautiful flowers, and, and she's just delightful to work with, and she's provided that for us. And um, I hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll tune in again next month. And until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses.